Hey guys, happy Friday. Mr. Fortin here. I'm gearing on up to come back to school on Monday. Got three days to go. Got the kids at daycare. So I figured uh, one of the things I could do is to film a video uh, going through your most recent homework. Because hey, it's been a while and we'll be dealing more with these angle relationships and their intercepted arcs. Um, when we get back, there are some different types of angles uh, that we're going to look at that aren't uh, necessarily inscribed angles or tangent chord angles. Now, I called this to you guys on Friday, I called them tangent secant angles. The textbook that I used to use called them tangent secant angles, but um, the textbook that we're using now, and I've used for the last several years, but I forgot to update that, <laughs> these are tangent chord angles, okay? So those would be the ones that are on the back. You get some tangent chord angles problems, okay? So these are all, all these problems are kind of work the same way because inscribed angles, okay, those are angles inside of a circle, but the vertex is actually on the circle itself. Um, their uh, inscribed angle is going to measure one half times the measure of its intercepted arc, okay? So I usually just abbreviate that uh, measure of R A R uh, arc ARC, even though these are different letters. Anyways, just, just as a placeholder, one half times the measure of an intercepted arc equals the measure of the inscribed angle, okay? So what that means is that the measure of an intercepted arc, okay, is going to be twice as large times by the measure of the inscribed angle. Okay, so you can use these two relationships as you work your way through these little puzzles here on the front side. So we're looking at the first one here. I got 69 degrees. I spy that right away. And for that angle here, because it intercepts between the arc in between uh, C and F, okay, minor arc CF, that would be the intercepted arc of this inscribed angle, angle E. Okay, so remember this is an inscribed angle here. So I know that in the inscribed angle, it's going to be one half the measure of that, okay? Or this measure of this arc here is going to be twice the measure of the inscribed angle. So if this is 69 degrees, then this intercepted arc here, notice how our angle E is going to, going to have, this is angle CEF right here. It's going to intercept this arc right here, okay? So what I'm going to know about this is that this arc right here is going to be two times by the inscribed angle that intercepts that arc, okay? So what this green arc here is gonna equal two times 69 is 138 degrees. Okay, I got 138 degrees here. I got 70 degrees there. Well, what's the question mark? Well, the question mark here is gonna be what's left over from 360. Remember, the whole circle is 360 degrees, okay? The whole circle. The whole circle is 360 degrees. So if this whole thing is 360, then the question mark sign is going to be 360 minus 138 minus 70. I got that 70 right there. Okay. I can do that in my head, hopefully. 360, I would do it. I would subtract the 70 first. 360 minus 70 is uh, 290. Okay. And then it's a little easier to subtract the 138. So I would do 290 minus 140 would be what, 150, then I gotta add two to it, so 152 is what I got. Use a calculator to double check. You know, I might've done that wrong in my head too. I don't know, but if I'm on test, I'd use a calculator, make sure I got the right answer. I'm just moving on with my life, going to this one. Ooh, we got angle X, it's inscribed in a semicircle. That's nice. Okay, I know this is a semicircle because, hey, this is the center of the circle. So that means WY is a diameter. I got a diameter right there. So what that means is that the intercepted arc here, semicircle Y, Y A W. Okay, any semicircle is going to measure 180 degrees. Okay, so that means that angle X is going to be 90 degrees. Angle W is 52. This is how this puzzle works here. We'll get the inscribed angle. Remember, the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Anytime I have an angle inscribed in a semicircle, that angle is going to be 90 degrees. So this angle here, sure. Oh, I got to get the question mark over there. I like this puzzle. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of different moving parts in this puzzle here. So this is 90. This is 52. Well, this is a triangle right here. If I know two angles of a triangle, sure, I can get the third one. I can just subtract it from 180. Okay, and then it's also, right, angle Y, WYX would have to be complementary to this angle YWX here because they're acute angles of a right triangle. So this is going to be 38 degrees, okay? And then here, I'm going to use this relationship. That's an inscribed angle. It's intercepting this arc. The inscribed angle, it's one half of this, okay? So that means that this arc here that I'm trying to find right over here, this arc, this arc here is going to be two times the measure of the inscribed angle, okay? So right here, this is going to be two times by that 38 degrees that we deduced from what I discussed a little bit earlier. Okay, two times 38, that's 76. There we go, bake it in. 
two for two, I'm hoping, okay? Uh, and yeah, you go a little bit faster as you kind of go through here, okay? So this is an obtuse angle, so that means it's going to exist within this side of the semicircle, so it's, gonna, it's a very big thing here. Okay, yeah, this is actually a pretty easy problem here. You just got to find the, find the third angle here, okay? Well, uh, 37 plus 104 would be 141, so this is going to be 39 degrees, 39 times 2, 78 degrees. There you go, right? Once you get this little bit of practice in, you can do these very quickly, okay? Any questions on this one? Well, send me a message. I could uh, walk through any of these problems here for you, but I think you guys can do the rest. All right, looking on the back side here, we got, ooh, sorry, bled through. Ignore this stuff. Ignore this stuff, okay? That's just bled through the paper, okay? It's the only paper I have here. Um, all right, so now we have a tangent chord angle. Okay, that's this right here, right? Notice here, this line is tangent, and this, this secant contains a chord. I was calling these tangent secant angles um, in last Friday's class. Uh, but now I'm going to call them tangent chord angles because I forgot your book will tell you what a tangent secant angle is. They define it a little bit differently, and that'll be coming up in section 7, 6. Uh, but anyways, this has the same relationship. Tangent chord angle right here. Got the tangent, got the chord. It's going to measure one half the measure of its intercepted arc, okay? So if I can figure out this right here, you know what? I, you know, there's actually, there are two ways of doing this one, okay? First of all, we know that angle RQ, and I'll put a Z here. This is a straight angle here. Angle RQZ is a straight angle. So uh, it's going to have to measure 180. So that means that the 48 degrees is supplementary to angle PQZ, okay? So 140 minus 48 is how I can figure out this angle, angle PQZ. So what I got here is I got 132 degrees for uh, angle PQZ, which is also a tangent chord angle tangent chord angle okay so any tangent and you draw a chord in there is going to give you two angles that are tangent chord angles and we can use this relationship okay so what i have here is my tangent chord angle it's that it's going to be one half whatever this is 132 is one half times this okay so that means that this is two times that okay two times that the tangent chord angle measures the arc measures two times as much as the actual angle itself a tangent chord angle. So really in all these problems here, when you have either the angle or the arc, you're either multiplying by two or you're dividing by two. And in this instant instance, I'm getting all this. I'm getting a pretty freaking big arc, okay? It's more than a semicircle. So my answer should certainly be more than 180 degrees. That's one way I can double check that I did this correctly, okay? So 132 isn't gonna be big enough, right? They're not gonna be the same. I gotta multiply that by two and I get 264 degrees. There, lock it in, we're good to go, okay? Should we do a couple other examples here? What about this one? Oh, I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna do number 11. Maybe I'll do number 13 too. How about that? How do you like them apples, okay? So this is 250 degrees, okay? So what about DEZ? What do I know about DEZ? Well, this is the arc here, and my arc here, okay, is twice as much as whatever, whatever this theta is right here, okay? Whatever this theta is right here. So this theta here, Okay, is this tangent chord angle is one half whatever the intercepted arc is. Okay, so I take 250 divided by two, I got 125 degrees. Okay, and this is actually asking, just asking me for what the supplement of that is. Okay, and the supplement of that is just what, 55 degrees? Yeah, 55 degrees. I can make sure my answer is right because I can actually figure out what this arc is very quickly. If this is 250, this is 110 because 250 plus 110 is 360, okay? Divide by two, I get 55 degrees, there we go. 55 degrees is my answer. Little puzzles for you this uh, spring break. Just a little bit of puzzles, a little bit of puzzle doing. Uh, okay, and then last one, well, these all kind of work the same. I don't think there's really any reason I need to do another example, but I'll do it anyways here. Um, and what I got here, I got the question mark there, the two, four, yeah, 246 divided, this is actually even easier on the front side, I think here. 246 divided by two is 123 degrees. Okay, and then this is just supplementary. Boom, I'm mostly asking for the angles on a lot of these. All right, so anyways, I won't do the rest of this one because that's really easy. Let's see, the, the, when you have the angle, can okay, maybe we'll do another angle, the, the, the example like this one here. When you have the angle, you're trying to, oh wait. Okay, let's do the, let's do the, let's do number 10, 16 here. Okay, when you have the angle, you're trying to get the, the arc. Well, this is just 45, so that's gonna be 90. These are super easy. I don't need to do those examples for you. <laughs> yep, the arc, okay, the arc is twice as long. Right, twice as large as the measure of the angle itself, the measure of uh, the tangent chord angles measure, I should have put there. Okay, respond to the question below in complete sentences, draw a picture of thinking, it's Charlie thinking, how are inscribed angles and tangent chord angles? No, oh, why did Mr. Ford get the, the terminology wrong there last Friday? How are they different from one another? How are they the same? 
What do they have in common with one another? Explain. So you're going to have to explain that. Uh, but one thing I hope you talk about is that uh, they're different from one another in that one's made up of a tangent <laughs> and one's made up of a chord, whereas inscribed angles are just made up of two chords. Okay, so that's one way they're different. Uh, how they're the same is more interesting because both of those angles, okay, they at least have one chord, okay, that makes them up, uh, even though the, the inscribed angle has two chords, okay? But what makes them really the same is that they follow the same formula, okay? They're, they each equal one half the measure of their intercepted arc, okay? That's true for inscribed angles and true for tangent chord angles, um, and one way we can keep track of this is where the vertex is, where the vertex is in both of those uh, angles. And both the vertices on any uh, inscribed angle or tangent chord angle is always going to be on the circle. Okay, so I can, you have to write in complete sentences here, but vertices are always on the circle. Okay, and they always measure one half times by the measure of the intercepted arc. That's true for both of those angles, okay? So this is how they are the same. <laughs> and here we go, you just have to do it in complete sentences. And then here's how they're different. Inscribed angle is made up of just chords. Remember, complete sentences for you, not for me. I'm a teacher. I'm just trying to relay some information. You've got to organize it here. Inscribed angle made up of just chords. And then tangent chord angle is not just chords. <laughs> okay, so that's sort of what I'm looking for there and a good way to kind of wrap things up. And hopefully you found your way uh, successfully through the rest of the assignment. Message if you have any questions. Hope you're having a great spring break. Take care. Bye.